So we're going to talk about today uh, creating landing pages to really attract qualified prospects. We've done some analysis of uh, just like an audit. We've taken some samples of our referral partners, looked at their website. So what we found is that too, ma too many of you do not have a website. And that in itself is disturbing. Then we did look at the ones who have a website and we found that they were not properly optimized. They did not have the proper information. So it, this today, this class today, I'm, I'm almost begging you to take this to heart and make the changes that we're talking about here. The modern customer, the customer of today is looking online and making a decision about you without you even knowing it. They are looking at your website and they are looking at to see if you're professional, if you look big enough to handle their operation, and do you have the right products? We've seen sites that just don't give that level of confidence and you need to have that in your bag. You need to have that supporting you as being a partner in your business. Lead generation in today's, in today's market, requires a solid website. So what we're going to do here today, I'm going to branch off here and show the some examples of what I'm talking about. All right, here's some landing pages. And this is really what I'm going to talk about. This is a search that I've done for Restaurant POS Orlando. And you can look and see that the first three are going to be ads. The first three are always going to be ads. These these are paid links to be um, put, put on a, a search when you search for something. The one at the top paid the most, and then as they go down, they are each bidding on placement. So the one who bids the most for this keyword will get the top billing, second and third. Now at the bottom, you'll have even more. You'll have uh, three more. So this is a fourth highest bidder, fifth and sixth. The, the people who are searching generally know that the ones who are placed at the top here are bidding or have paid for that ad. They will often just skip right over them and then go to the organic searches, the ones that have come up organically through natural search processes and search engine optimization of their site. Uh, here, the first one is this is a, a POS company, a software developer located here. This Smile POS though, these guys are not located here. I'm not sure where they're located. I've looked and I can't really determine the exact location because they have so many landing pages. When I clicked on them, this is what I'm looking at. And it says Orlando, Florida. But I'm telling you, they're not located here. If you want to find out any more about them, you can look and see they have the same web page for every location. This is what a landing page is. This is what they're using to make you or the merchant believe that they are located here in the Orlando area. They're not. You can go here to locations, look for complete, just click on something, and these are where they narrow it down. These are all the little cities in this area, counties and cities. They're not located in all these, but nonetheless, they're making you or making the merchant believe that. This is a town here close to me that is 40,000 people. It's a bedroom community. People live here and work someplace else. So there's no really true businesses. And I can promise you there's not a point of sale guy here. But nonetheless, here you go. They make it look like they are all over Apopka. 
they have their landing page optimized to where you think they are here. This is the power of a landing page. You can look here and see other companies that are also using landing pages to make you think they'd lo that they're located here. This company is actually in New York City. I know them personally. They are not here in Florida. POS Atlanta is one I'm going to use as an example. They are a very large Aldelo dealer. They have an optimized landing page for restaurant POS in Florida, particularly Orlando. So I went to another city, um, Birmingham. And I did a restaurant POS in Birmingham. Once I get past the ads, you start looking at other companies that are located or have a landing page. This is a company in Orlando. Uh, let's see. Some of these are located there. Uh, host tab is not located there. They don't have dealers. And here's POS Atlanta again. So what we have here is POS Atlanta has a landing page that's optimized for Birmingham. Let's do one more search, Nashville. Some of these are located there, but how in the world do you think Austin POS, Austin, Texas POS, has a site in Nashville. That's because of a landing page. The same for Harbor Touch. There's Smile again. Now, RDS does have an office there. So does Data Cash Register. And then you get down to uh, some others. I want to go to page two here and show you one more thing. Get past the ads. And look who we have here again. US Atlanta. He's got another landing page. That's the power that we're trying to get you to understand about POS Atlanta and how landing pages have made them look bigger than they are. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And hopefully, you guys can get an understanding of what they are and how powerful they are. So let's look at the purpose. I'm kind of showing you what they are in real life. Let's look at the purpose of it. They, toward, they are to attract targeted and qualified prospects. I, I should have put qualified, underlined, and then capital letters. The merchant and the prospects are searching online for certain keywords. We're going to get into those keywords in a minute. But you, these qualified prospects are looking for what you have to offer. You just have to have the right hook to attract them. Once you get them there, you, then your landing page has to engage them. Get them to go deeper into your site. Here, here's more information. Learn more. Gather more information. And then eventually obtain their contact information that then they therefore convert. That is the term that you're gonna to have to get comfortable with is what is your conversion rate? You'll see how many visitors you have and then you'll look at how many you convert to a lead and then there, that will be your conversion rate. There are reporting tools from Google that are extremely powerful that are free to use and provide you a really wealth of information that you should look at. Google Analytics is the tool that I'm referring to. So they that, that analytics tool will ca calculate your conversion. So you'll have that. It is just as important to know your conversion rate as it is to know how much you're, you're selling in your business or your closing percentage. It's the same type philosophy. And I put or obtain their confidence contact information or have them purchase if you're an e-commerce site. You can put 
product on your web page and convert them to a sale. What we're, uh, we're seeing from some of the more successful dealers, in fact, our most successful dealer has shortened the buying cycle because their competition was offering them same day or next day installation. That is possible with Adelo Express and the Adelo Pay platform. And what, well, they've taken the sales cycle where it used to be 90 days to get from the first contact to completely turning over the system and installing it. They've shortened it to 24 hours, 48 at the max. And they are extremely successful because they are now allowing people to go onto their website and make a purchase and then get delivered ASAP. So don't discount e-commerce. That is another powerful tool. Not gonna to use it today, we're not gonna talk about it today, but it's something that you should uh, look at. The first step is to identify the keyword that you're going to optimize for, the things that your customers are looking for. And I put these up here as examples. Uh, you wanna do maybe restaurant POS and then your city. You might wanna do a Delo restaurant POS in then your city. Each one of these can be identified and optimized for a specific market. You can go and look at all the major areas in your region. How far do you wanna drive? Is it 100 miles, 200 miles, 300? How far do you wanna go? You can then determine the major markets in those in those areas that you would like to go after. Think about the state that you're in and what where your location is and what you might want to go after. Here in, in Florida, you'd want to go Jacksonville, Orlando, Daytona, Lakeland, Tampa, Fort Myers, Naples. There's probably a dozen or more smaller markets that you could do this for and make yourself look like you're in those areas. Choose the keywords that you want to optimize for and then create pages for each of those. You want to have a keyword that is focused on what is called a long tail keyword phrase. Restaurant POS is two words. That is really just a simple keyword. A long tail keyword is one that's gonna be three or more words that help narrow the search down to what they are specifically looking for. People who are, who are doing the searches, they won't just search POS. They'll get too many results. So they're gonna start putting into their search bar longer terms or phrases. And that's what's called a long-term keyword, a long-tail keyword. You'll need to have something like we've talked about, restaurant, POS, and then your city. Free restaurant, POS, and then your city. That's a four-word phrase. That is a long-tail keyword. You want to narrow down the search so you're getting a more qualified prospect to your site. You want to have the URL, which is the address of the site. You want to have a, a URL or a website address that is something specific to what you're selling. And in this case, POS, restaurant POS, the city, those type things actually go into the search optimization. Then behind the scenes are the title, description, and keywords that really tie in the long term long tail keyword. We'll show you those here in a minute, how you can optimize those or how they should be optimized. And yes, you will need multiple landing landing pages for each of the targeted markets. So back to those keywords that we showed you on the previous page, if you are doing this right, you're gonna have a landing page for each of those keywords that you want your customer to find you. So if it's 
um, kitchen video, then you're going to have a landing page that's all about kitchen video, images and pictures. You're going to then have links to other pages in your on your web page, on your website to get them engaged. You'll need a contact form. You'll need all this on your landing page to get them engaged and then ultimately convert them to a prospect. So don't be this guy. Don't be the guy that's only got one hook in the water. Don't do that with just a single fishing pole. And that's really what your website is. It's just a single opportunity for someone to find you. If you have a single opportunity for someone to find you will only result in a very few catches, if you will. Put more hooks in the water. It just makes sense. You're going to catch more fish if you put hooks in the water. Be this guy. Be the guy who's got all these hooks in the water, bring in all these fish and all these prospects and all these, these leads. And you need to be this guy. Have those several hooks and then create more leads. Everything I'm teaching you today is about bringing in more leads to your operation with very little ongoing effort. Yes, there is effort up front. No doubt, I'm not trying to make any light of it. You're gonna to have to spend some midnight oil. But during this quarter, we all know that the POS industry is, it always takes a downturn in Q4. It's forever, it's done that forever. December is a slow month. Take the downtime to do this project and you will reap the benefit. So let's take a look at building a landing page. What I've done is actually we've created some landing pages for us to play with on the Adello.com website. So you're looking at the back side of our, our website. We're using a company called Weebly, but there are many other companies that are similar to this that you could use to create your website. These are online website editors. You do not have to know HTML to use these. They are a drag and drop type of uh, program. So they're pretty easy to use. There are others that are similar to Weebly. Uh, I've used in the past one called Joomla, J-O-O-M-L-A. And the most popular in the, in the country is WordPress. But I, whichever one you choose, they're gonna work similar to what we're gonna show today. So we've, we've created the, the absolute shell of a page. This is the basics. I put an image there of the Miami Beach there, so it looks like this is a, a page that is dedicated to Miami. You would need to do that if you were doing something in your area. If you were doing something for uh, a college town, Athens, Georgia, I would have pictures that would, of the university. Have local pictures. If you're doing something in Atlanta, you want to have pictures of downtown Atlanta. You're going to have pictures maybe of Stone Mountain. If you're in um, other areas, just use some local pictures to enhance what you're looking for and make it look like that page is for them. And on this site, here's our blank slate. So you would go over here and, and pull in and bring in the title. You would then, you could go in then and pull in the text that goes underneath the title. And then it may be an image, it goes over here to the right. That's how easy it is to place these and create what you're looking for. So you would create a title for a manual.
underneath, you're going to have the uh, keep moving it around. Here we go. The text that goes underneath it would allow you then to um, write something specific for that area and something specific for that web page. And you'd want to have it located or give some locations. Uh, in the in the Miami area, you would talk about Key West, you talk about Hialeah, you're going to talk about the different areas there, and actually put those city names in. So you're going to want to name that and put those street name or area names. You want to have a um, image of Miami. Something to give it that homey feel. And when you're done, you then have a, a good title and a good start to the page. I'm going to put in a uh, divider, another title. Now I've created two columns. So maybe in this column I want to go uh, now what I've done is just created a keyword. These are tags in your in the background of the image or the background of the of the page. It's actually writing this in HTML for you. So for us, this is creating what's called an H1 tag. That is a, a important cat tag. And so search engines are gonna look for that. So here I just just use bullet points. As you're typing and creating those bullet points underneath, you're actually giving a list of features. Search engines are going to look for that and they're going to see that. They're going to then optimize or see you're optimizing this page for coffee shops in Miami. You can then add a button that allows them then to learn more. Choose the style of the button you want to have, and then center it, and then put a link. And I'm going to link this to a page that's already in our site. This is what I was referring to when you want them to engage. So they want to learn more about your uh, coffee shop operation. So now when they when this page is published, they see the coffee shop POS is, is the area they're looking for. You're going to have the bullet copy of all the features that are referring to a coffee shop POS. And then if they want to learn more, they click here and they then engage and go further into your website. You would do that for every type of restaurant that you're going to optimize for on this page. Once you are comfortable with what you've got here, then you're going to want to have a form. If you'll also notice here on the left, that the uh, you have links for YouTube videos that 
uh, kind of going hand in hand on what we did last week when I taught you how to do the um, videos. You can add videos to your web page to kind of give it even a better look and feel. So here's the contact form. If you wish to add additional fields, you can. So in this case, I want to add a field to this form for a telephone. Once you're done, you can then publish this page and it will then, um, you're able then, once you're satisfied with everything you have here, you can then copy this page for the additional cities. And what you're going to do then is change the title here and the verbiage that goes below it. Now, let me show you what we've got here as far as a finished page. This is a restaurant POS Florida. I put a different image, another image here, and then this section is specifically for the optimization of this page for Florida. I mentioned cities in here that would then be relevant to people who are searching. Once we do the search engine optimization, we're going to make sure that the words Orlando, Tampa Bay, Tallahassee, Miami, Jacksonville are in the optimization so that when somebody is looking for restaurant POS, Jacksonville, Florida, this page will come up. Below that are is, is not, not really boilerplate, but it's going to be the same thing for every site, for every one of our landing pages. You have images, you have learn more under each area, under each type of restaurant. These lead to pages that are already on our website for additional information. So yes, you will have to have um, a, a coffee shop POS web page. So this can link to it. When you get to the bottom, there are um, there's your get a free demo. This is our our lead conversion. Be sure and put your other contact information here, such as phone number and email. Now, I'll show you what an optimized page should be. This is our AdeloPOS.com website. In viewing the source, you'll see this is what HTML looks like. For some of you, this may be the first time ever seeing it, but this language is what is being created by us doing the drag and drop and adding in the image or whatever. This is now that. Weebly site is creating this HTML. So what you're starting here, you look at the top and you see the word head. That tells you that it's starting the heading of the uh, page. There'll always be a slash head where there's the end of it. But right now we're going to talk about the very first thing is the word title. So here is the title for our web page. This is page specific. So SEO is going to have the Adelo POS or Adelo Cloud POS, Adelo Restaurant Point of Sale. That is the name of the page. The description, let's go down here, 
down here to this area. This is the description for the Adela web page. While this is important for optimization of this, of this specific page, this is also the verbiage that comes up when you do a search in Google or Yahoo or wherever you're searching. This is the verbiage that comes up right below the page location. So what you put here will be shown in the search results. And then here are the keywords. You just simply type the keywords in and put a comma between them. This has to be page specific. Each one of these three things that I've just shown you, keywords, description, and title, all have to be page specific. So when you have a coffee shop POS page, your, your title, description, and keywords have to be about coffee, about coffee shop stuff. Same thing for pizza. You don't put coffee shop tags and keywords on a pizza page. They have to be done specific to the page. So I'm gonna stop now and, and I've gone through the presentation. I've done, uh, I've, we've you know, created a web page, we've created a landing page, you've seen what a completed landing page looks like, and we've talked about what the landing page can do for you. Let's go ahead and open it up for questions to see what you, what you have.